Uh, distinguished colleagues, if we're following our list, I was, I was expecting Professor Ali Pate, but I think we have uh, uh, Dr. Latif Fagwemi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Am I right? So I will only we will take the nominee that the special, uh, uh, senior special assistant to the president brings into the chambers. But next time, let's try and follow the the list as as uh, as stated in our other paper. But nevertheless, I welcome uh, Latif Fagwemi, senior advocate of Nigeria from Kwara State. Oh, I know why now. The, he is accompanied by the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum and the governor of uh, Kwara State. I think he's in chambers. You are welcome. And he's also accompanied <laughs> by a legal luminary and one of Nigeria's best. Chief Wale Olani Pegun, uh, chairman of this, chairman of that, body of benchers and all that. Uh, we, are, we are delighted to have you in the Senate. We have Madam Yusuf Ali, senior advocate of Nigeria. We have Charles Edoswan, Edo senior advocate of Nigeria. We have Adeni Yakin Chola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, we have um, Afolabi Fashionu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. We have Hakim Afolabi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. We have Aliu Sarki, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. But uh, I'm, above all, the Chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum, His Excellency, the Governor of Kuala State. I can see him seated there. So. We recognize you especially. Our colleagues will do well to get back to their seats so we can continue with the serious business of screening these nominees for appointment to save humanity and rescue the federal government of Nigeria. Mr. Nominee, welcome to the Nigerian Senate. We have your <laughs> resume before us. Give us just a summarized version of this resume. And if there's anything you think you want to add that is not content therein, you can do so. The floor is yours. The Senate President, the Deputy Senate President, the Leader of the Senate, the Chief Whip, Deputy Chief Whip, distinguished Senator Lola Shiro, that's my, the senator from my constituency, distinguished senator, and my friend, Mustafa Lituraki of Ilorin. I, the senior president, I have no intention of personalizing the proceedings here but please permit me to also say that to greet Senator Buhari. They are from Oyo because I came from Oyo from my practice there. Senator Yunus and my very good friend, Senator Sarafa Ali. That said, I will just veer off and say Senator Adib Mamiri because he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. My name is Latif Olasunkomi Fagbemi. I was born third into a family of five at number 38, Lagos Street, Ebutemeta, Lagos, on the 16th day of July, 1959. Around 1962, I was taken to Ghana 
but returned in 1965 to start what we call kindergarten that eventually started my primary school in 1966 at Ansarudin Primary School in Lorin. I was there until 1972. In 1973, between 1973 and 1978, I attended both Ofa Grammar School and Grammar School, Ofa and Onyo Baptist High School, Ijabo, for my secondary education. I then moved to Kwara State College of Technology, School of Basic Studies, to do my higher uh, education certificate under the supervision of University of Cambridge. I finished from there and um, went to University of Jos between 1984, I mean, 1981 and 1984. I then got to the Nigerian Law School in 1985. I became a lawyer in August 1985 and did my Youth service, call, uh, yes, did my youth service in Ibadan in 1985. That is between 1985 and 1986. I then went back to University of Ife, as it then was, for my master's degree. Since then, I've been in active legal practice. I trained under that world-renowned jurist turned educationist, educationist, Chief Afe Babalola. Like I said, since then, I've been in active legal practice. The Senate President, this is the, rest, I mean the, the short resume of the candidate standing before him. Much obliged. Well, I can see so many hands up. So let's keep the hands down. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll give a lot of people the opportunity to ask questions. Because if you meet him in court, he will do the same to you. He'll ask you questions. And let's, uh, let's get somebody from his state first who may come up with accolade, because I, I suspect that. So, if we, if, unless the person has a question to ask, before we go into the real business of asking questions, this uh, is Senator Sario Mustafa, Kuala uh, State. You, you have the floor. Your Excellency, the Senate President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Sario Mustafa, representing Kuala Central. Before you here, you have an accomplished lawyer who needs no further introduction. And that is why you saw so many hands are up. I'm sure they've indicated interest to also shower him with a lot of accolades. I'm sure not questions. <laughs> he is a lawyer who has paid his dues in the industry he chose. He was a lawyer at 26, became a senior advocate of Nigeria at 37. And from his brief explanation now or intro, he told us he served under the renowned Afe Babalola, turned educationist now. I have closely studied the senior advocate of Nigeria, Latif Fagbemi, to be one of the few senior advocates of Nigeria who take pride in whatever he does. He is a very humble person by nature. He takes his time. He listens very well, and he will give you the necessary advice and guide, even when you don't consult him for legal engagement. He is one of the few lawyers who I believe sometimes 
will do what other lawyers will not do. Give you a free of charge consultation. <laughs> Pro bono. I am really proud and elated that he's from Kwara State. He is one of the leading lights in the legal industry in the country. And I know if confirmed by this Senate, he will not only do this Senate proud, but the country and the president for nominating or appointing him as a minister. So I would wish that he will maybe help the Senate in one or two areas, especially in enlightening or broadening our minds in certain issues that might have been reoccurring decimals when it comes to legal explanation of maybe jurisdictions of certain areas. I'm proud to have him as a nominee from Kwara State. Like I said, I know he will do the country a very great deal of um, experience. I mean, he will give the country a very great deal of experience in his chosen profession. And I'm sure when we encounter him next time, we will be encountering a minister of justice who will always work with the Senate if confirmed. Thank you very much. Well, the civil senator Mustafa is more or less confirming that the Quara caucus has no objection to this nominee. And so I think that was important for me. But maybe since there is a, another very ranked senator from Quara, Senator Sadiq, you may wish to add something before your governor penalizes you that you said nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues. I am Sadiq Sulaiman Umar. I represent the good and decent people of Kwara, not OR. Mr. President, we are very proud of the nominee. And as my colleague said, as you see in standing there, if you look, you might not see a giant. But when you look at when you can get into his head, his mind, he is a giant. Mr. President, Well, the nominee is someone that is well known and his values are that of humility, discipline, commitment and empathy. And this is what we need to be able to achieve the renewed hope government that we are trying to uh, establish. Mr. President will have said that this legal luminary should take a bow and go, but you know, it's a product we are so proud of. We are happy that he's asked questions. And in fact, I will encourage my colleagues to do that by also asking a very simple question. Mr. Nominee, congratulations. Uh, the simple question I have for you is the usual thing that goes on in this country, where most people seem to have this mis misconception of government, all the three arms of government. The truth is that there is one single federal government in Nigeria, headed by President uh, Ahmed Bola Tinibu. The three arms are separated for just checks and balances. But they must work collaboratively, respectively, and synergize to be able to deliver the key objectives of what the government needs to deliver to the people. My question is, how would you relate with the National Assembly to ensure that this synergy is maintained respectfully without compromising the separation of powers. Thank you. Um, this uh, distinguished senator, I, I just want to, I'm moving from his place of birth. I may not touch Ghana, but I will touch Oyo. 
Dizim sene daha aşağı varayım. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, I remain Sharaf Adin Abiyodun Ali. I represent the group people of Oyo South Senatorial District. I can say that in Omni Falls today resides in my senatorial district and has been attested to him by himself. He recognized the three of us who are from Ohio State. He is somebody I've known for over 35 years. And the distinguished colleagues, for this caliber of people to accompany our nominee here shows the kind of person, the giant, as said by, senator, by the distinguished senator, that he is. He is a person who I sincerely believe is going to add value to the efforts of Mr. President in his renewed hope agenda. I know that he can answer our questions. Not only answer the questions, but answer them intelligently. But I do not believe in belabouring issues because he is the first nominee here that will be accompanied here by no less than seven senior advocates and the state governor. I plead with his new colleagues that the nominee, after stating his resume, be asked to take a leave of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. Why not? Why not? Yes. This in which colleagues, Senator Yisha Ashiru Oyerola. Mr. Senior President, um, Senator Ashiro Oyelola, yes, I hope we're together. The nominee for today, I will want to start by saying, expressing our gratitude to Mr. President for deeming it fit to nominate him as a minister of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria. I don't want to overemphasize what has been said about him. I will go a little bit micro. And what I mean by that I don't want to talk too much about his legal prowess because it's well known to all of us. He has consulted in so many states of federation, more than 15 or 18 by the last count. And he has provided legal services to so many parastatas, agencies, and corporate bodies. So in terms of law, his competence is definitely not in doubt. But I want to talk about the person I know. He doesn't want to be called a prince. But Mr. Latif Fagbemi is not just a prince of Ijabu, he's a prince of Ife. Of recent, he lost his father, who was the king of Ijabu, at a very rapid of 
almost 110 years. And I'm very sure he will live to surpass that age because of his dominion. People die quickly out of hunger, out of anger. When you look at uh, the nominee for today, you will never see any hunger in him. He has a total control of himself. He has a total control of his environment. And he has been good to all of us. He has been good to all of us in our senatorial district. From what I know about him, he has invested more than 350 million in helping schools around our senatorial districts. He's a total family man. Not just a micro family. The whole town is a large family means family. But I would not want to end by not asking a question because there are so many things that are jamming and the office is going to occupy. One, Alajib Bafagbemi is not a politician. In fact, in most cases, he wants to draw a distance from partisan politics. But I want to say, Mr. Senate President, I will want to advise the nominee that the new position is taken today as an index of politics. There have been interaction with the Senate. There have been supervision from the Senate committee here. You must be able to enlarge, enlarge your mind and be able to take them in. The essence of it is that we are all working to make Nigeria a better place. Mr. President, the other area we want to touch is earlier area a little bit I said law at the same time, still related to law. There are a lot of uh, conflict, communal conflict, everywhere in Nigeria, especially on land matter. And particularly, it's so common within the Eastern Bloc, the Southern Nigeria, and Central Nigeria. I we want to mention a little bit. There were issues of if a mother there are issues of uh, Sarah Gisare in her own domain, and there are issues of uh, Ilobu and Ifan, even in a uh, town belonging to Chief of Army Staff. And equally, I want to mention too that in my own locality, the issue of Ofane really. I want to ask you. How do we get a settlement without going to court or without brother and brother going to war? Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to take my seat. Uh, my name is Senator Mohamed Alindumi, representing Borno South. Mr. Nomini, I have a very important personal question to you on the issue of Unexplained Wealth Act and the Unexplained Wealth Order. For the country to move forward, we all admit that we must fight corruption and that is one of the main problems in this country. 
in fighting the corruption, the government put in place so many institutions, EFCC, ICPC, police, and all that. But you will agree with me as a lawyer that it has not been effective. The fundamental reason is because of the constitutional provision which states that an accused is assumed innocent until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Here is the challenge. You have somebody that has unexplained wealth. You cannot prosecute him to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And I guess that is the wisdom why in even developed countries like UK, there is the unexplained wealth order, which I believe as a senior advocate, you know. And you know that the fight against corruption in this country cannot get anywhere if the burden of proof is placed on the prosecutor. In those countries, there is the unexplained wealth order or unexplained wealth act. And it's practiced, I understand, by my research, over 20 countries, including US and UK, whereby you are asked to explain where you got the money to buy what is not commensurate with your income. I hope that the Unexplained Wealth Act or Mr. President himself will issue an executive order on unexplained wealth. So my question, what is your position on that? As person that I know, religious, God-fearing, and also a patriot, and I'm, you are one of those that believes that corruption must be fought to a standstill in this country if we are to make progress. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Sitting as the chair, I am in Baribe. I represent Abia South. Mr. Nominee, your name rings bells. And you have litigated very, uh, I will say, landmark cases that has even changed, made us change the law here. I'm referring to Amechi versus Einek. And you have been known specifically as an advocate of rule of law and a strong supporter of constitutional democracy. What would your option be, assuming we confirm you and the president appoints you to where we all think you should go as the chief law officer of the federation? What will your option be? If the government you serve desecrates the constitution and does not obey court orders. Thank you. Off your mic. Is that a question? The question you are saying is if the uh, government does what? If the government does not obey court orders and the government desecrates the constitution. Well, the, the, I have a problem with the, the, uh, with, uh, the, with the leading question. You had, are you trying to suggest that a, a government that believes so much in the rule of law will desecrate the constitution? A government that swears to uphold the constitution? So, uh, because you are, you are, is there anybody that can help Senator Baribe to, to, to frame this question in a more respectable manner? Because uh, this, this is preemptive. The government is not even up to two months old. And speculative, and you are saying if the government, previous governments that you saw, 
is what you should be talking about, not this government. This government is a corrective regime. Now, this go the government of Bola Ahmed Tunibu is out to, to change Nigeria. And it's a government that believes in the rule of law. And you are saying if the government disagrees. So please, that language should not be allowed. Please, uh, Senator Adero, I believe you can, you can handle it better. Please yeah, reframe it for him. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting in the chair, distinguished colleagues, our respected nominee. Uh, let me start by, first of all, congratulating for being nominated to serve as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, let me also start with the question asked by my distinguished colleague, my neighbor, Senator Abarim. This government believes in the rule of law. And disobedience to court order will not be tolerated in any way, in any form. And if you find yourself to be assigned to the Ministry of Justice as Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, would you tolerate a situation where court order is being disobeyed? Secondly, this is my own personal question. There is serious prison congestion arising from judges not being enough to deal with cases, particularly at the higher court. It is very common to see a person being detained in prison for over four years for an offense that shouldn't take more than six months, even if he's convicted. Our prisons all over Nigeria are like that. What would you do to decongest our prisons? If you are appointed as Minister of Justice, uh, thirdly, there is a dilemma for removal of immunity, particularly for public officers like governors, deputy governors, president, and the vice president. We attempted to remove it in the ninth Senate or in the ninth assembly, but we couldn't succeed because we couldn't get enough support from the states. Would you subscribe to the view that immunity should be removed for public officers, particularly governors and uh, president and vice president and deputy governors. Mr. <laughs> 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 uh, president, I, I need your protection. I need your protection. Uh, distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, uh, is, uh, it, because of the number of hands, it will be good for us to restrict ourselves to one one question, and, and so that others can have the opportunity to ask. And if there is any question you are not able to ask, please, the learner's silk is available. Write it and pass it through the uh, the leader of the Senate. You will pass it to him, and he will, we will still come back here to read it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Senator Alero. Senator, 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 Senator Alero, Senator Alero, you, you enjoyed immunity for eight years as a governor, and, and you did not and you uh, and you did not complain about during your eight years. You complained that you were enjoying immunity, and that uh, the and that when you were governor, the immunity should have been removed in order to allow your orderly to arrest you uh, whenever there was a petition against you. Okay, okay. Senator Neida, you will come back to you. We'll 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 come back to you. Senator Neida. Thank you, 
Mr. President, my learned colleagues, I'm Neda Imaswen, representing the good people of Edo South Senatorial District. Leonard Silk, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. Looking through your resume, we attended this law school the same year, 1985. I'm so I'm proud to have you here as one of us. My question, the office of the Attorney General and the office of the Minister for Justice is woven in one. And I believe that there is a conflict of interest in that office as it is. If by the grace of God, you are confirmed the Minister for Justice. Will you support that office to be split into two so we can have the Minister for Justice and the Attorney General for the Federation separated so that they can perform their functions separately? Because as it is, their functions seem to conflict with the interest of the president and that of the people. What is your position on this, Leonard Sirk? Thank you. The single senator, Dan Guambo. Uh, your Excellency, the question I want to ask is similar to what he asked. I want to ask if it is right to separate the office of the Attorney General of the Federation and the Attorney General of the Federal Government as is being initiated and, and is being asked all the time. Accountant General of the Federation, Accountant General of the Federal Government. Attorney General of the Federation, Attorney General of the Federal Government. Is it right? Does it give the President enough powers to perform his role on the economy and the justice system? That's my submission, Your Excellency. We should give the nominee the opportunity to be heard. I am very grateful I'm very grateful let me start let me start from the question posed by distinguished senator Sadiq Umar and I start on a note of apology because I should have um, mentioned him as one of the senators from my state. Unfortunately, the impression I had was that he was not around. That said, let me talk about the question he, po he raised. Um, it's about the relationship between the National Assembly and the Office of the Attorney General. I don't see any difference between this question and the relationship amongst the three tiers of government. The government stands on the tripoid, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. And the French philosopher, Montesquieu, advocated the issue of separation of powers, rule of law, and others. But there is nowhere in the world where you have watertight separation of powers. It is the interest of the nation, the interest of the country that is paramount and will dictate how we relate, all for the good, betterment, and advancement of our nation. So, as Attorney General, if I find myself there, 
I cannot do without the National Assembly. I cannot do without the judiciary. But it has to be on certain defined parameters. That's one. Then my very good friend, Senator Sarafa Ali, I just want to thank you for the good things you said about me. Then my boss at home, and I say here, Senator Lola Ashiro has asked that, well, because I'm not a politician, the Office of the Attorney General, with all respect, is supposed to maintain a modicum of independence. But that does not mean that you will not take into consideration the mood of the nation. So that is what is important because it is the Constitution, it is the law that I am expected to uh, uh, guide and guard, again, all in the interest of the nation. About this issue of um, land dispute and all that, my answer is going to be two, a two-pronged uh, uh, approach. The first one is, it is either a dispute between one state and another, or between one local government and another. In fact, three. The third one is, within the same local government, you can have dispute as to land. But I'm aware that we have land, I mean, boundary uh, 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 commission. Whether or not we'll achieve uh, harmony in respect of land matters depends greatly or a great deal on our governors. Because very few instances of state uh, clashes, you know, interstate uh, 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 um, disputes arise. So it behoves the governor of a particular state to take the bull by the horn and not play politics with it. It's very important because when election is coming, the issue is, oh, let me wait, otherwise I'm going to lose this election. So my advice is that it is the state governors that we turn to to do the needful. At the local government, it is the local government chairman who should also take the bull by the horn. At the uh, uh, federal level, the president, uh, well, the boundary commission, which is a body established or recognized by law, should swing into action. But my general advice is that it is better to nip these disputes in the bud as soon as you realize or there is indication that's likely to be boundary dispute or communal dispute, I will advise the authorities to swing into action and not allow it to fester or get to such a magnitude that it will now be unmanageable. Now, in respect of um, the distinguished Senator Ndume, unexplained wealth, I want to discuss this under a broad head of corruption. It is only in Nigeria that we want to take omelette without bringing egg. It's not possible. But we must also realize that the whole purpose of the society, of the nation, of the country, of the group, any group, is to promote economic development. In fact, if you have an enabling environment for economic, uh, uh, I mean, for investment, you have li little problem dealing with uh, uh, unemployment. But there cannot be invest, uh, there cannot be, this will not work unless you have an en enabling environment in respect of legal, uh, uh, I mean, the legislation. Truth be told, we we'll fight corruption, but at the same time, the way it is being fought in Nigeria leaves much to be desired. That is the truth. If I have my way, I will advise the president to unbundle. First of all, bring ICPC and uh, um, EFCC together, unbundle them. Investigation should not be handled by the same body. There must be 
the supervising uh, 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 authority within the same system. If there is investigation, it is another body. Prosecution is another body. It doesn't augur well to ask the same authority to, okay, do investigation, come and do prosecution. That is where we have problems. Then we are also not, uh, um, let me say, patient enough. You know, investigation takes time, especially in serious corruption cases. Are we prepared to wait? My take is that a, a situation should be created, such as the one that happened in, uh, uh, when uh, Hosh Poppy was arrested. They, have been, they had been trailing him for years. He didn't know. And nobody will talk to him. But the day they said the time was up, he also knew that the time was up. Investigation should be thorough. It shouldn't be that when a given uh, uh, um, governor leaves office, you now say, yes, let's go. EFCC is inviting you. That is not the way to prosecute criminal matters, corruption matters. You can take your time to prosecute, but when you knock, and it is like it should be like the way an average American will uh, uh, react when the uh, 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 F, uh, FBS, FBI knock at the door. You call your lawyer. Yeah, it won't be to come and defend. It will be, please, this negotiation, there uh, uh, have to be a, a plea bargain and prepare to surrender so much. Because when you open the books, you yourself will be surprised. Is that what we have in Nigeria? I will answer it with an outstanding no, negative. So if you are ready, and it will involve, with respect, the National Assembly, make laws that will be good for the society without anticipating, oh, will this one affect me? I'm sorry, it's just time for, to say the truth. We have to put in place very good laws to do this. Then, apart from the issue of having good laws, I have always insisted that it is better to have even bad laws administered by good men than to have good laws administered by bad men. It is important that we do this. So, but the issue of, oh, uh, somebody, uh, 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 um, uh, fear hearing, distinguished, we have to obey the Constitution. There must be fear hearing. You cannot condemn a man unheard. It's never done anywhere. We cannot be in a hurry because, uh, we cannot say because we want to prosecute, then you now brush aside the age long with the one that has started even during the time of uh, Adam and Eve. We all know what happened. But make sure that investigation is thorough. And when we talk of investigation being thorough, we pump money there. We have to pump money there. Unbundle the, uh, the authorities. That, 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 that has to be. Then, with respect, on the issue of uh, not obeying court orders. There is no government, especially the head, who will want to joke with the judiciary. It is those around him. In Nigeria, what we have, or which we have to uh, um, uh, pay attention to, is interagency rivalry. You have the EFCC, you have the FSS, you have other security, I mean, uh, um, yes, organizations. I think, with respect, you will not find the president flouting any order because the attorney general will invariably be made a party. The mere fact that an order is made does not mean that you should obey it immediately. You think about it, do I appeal? Do I, uh, 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 if I appeal, what do I do next? If I'm not appealing, what am I supposed to do? If I know, I'm not appealing, of course, you, I cannot subject the order of court to any further test of validity. By Section 287, it has to be uh, obeyed not only by uh, the government, by every authority and persons in Nigeria. So the question of these, uh, you know, in, in the major areas where we have these um, disobedience of court order are between, with, with all respect, between these, I mean, these agencies. My advice, 
would be that in matters of law, the Attorney General should be involved. DSS cannot be an island unto itself. EFCC cannot continue to, you know, uh, 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 behave as if there is no law. There is law. And if you want to do investigation, you do investigation before inviting the accused person. It is not a question of inviting him and you say, we have caught a big fish. Then at the end of the day, you say you are investigating. So that also goes to the issue of the pace at which uh, 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 the cost of justice travels. It can be slow, but it's very sure. And I take example from what is happening in the United States. Trump has a 2000, 2024 appointment or date in court. Believe me, uh, some people will say, oh, uh, 2024. No. That 2024, if God preserves our lives till and beyond that day, nothing will make them shift it because thorough investigation would have been done. You do your investigation before arrest and not arrest before investigation. I'm grateful. Furthermore, Now, see the... Um, the two senators... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way, senators, you can notice renewed hope, renewed hope in our judicial processes. So I will want you to just answer one question from me, and then you can step aside. The question I want to ask, I know you, you will go. The question I want to ask is, where you have courts of coordinate jurisdiction, courts that have the same jurisdiction, let me explain it that way, and then they bring out divergent judgments on the same issue, conflicting judgments on the same matter, a court in Yola will give judgment in the Federal High Court in Yola on, on the same matter. Another one in Potter Court will give a different judgment on the same matter. Another one in Wari will give judgment on the same matter. Another one in Kano will give judgment on the same matter. If God gives you the office of the Attorney General of the Federation, how will it bring sanity to bear? Because it, it, make, it tends to make people to lose confidence in the judicial system. That's uh, number one, because I think something should be done where there should be judicial precedence. If there is already a judgment on a particular matter, we don't see how... In fact, in some instances, we have seen where the High Court sets aside Supreme Court decisions by virtue of their decisions. Supreme Court has decided something on a matter. And then somebody will go to High Court, and High Court will decide something totally different without looking at the precedent already set by the Supreme Court. Don't you think that how will you, if you have the opportunity, work hard to bring discipline and sanity to bear? That's one question. The other one is most of the boundary crises you refer to, are not things that you can leave to state governments or local governments. Some of them are perennial problems that were caused by the creation of states and local governments. I know of some local governments in my state that are actually Igbo-speaking local governments. But during state creation, they were excised from Abia State. Some villages were excised from Abia State and put into a quibble. And then I don't want to 
And then when they come, they don't understand the language at all. In fact, they are clearly Igbo speaking. And their traditional rulers uh, hardly answer to the traditional institution in Akwaibo. But they, they, the villages are in Akwaibo. Then you go to another area, in, in the local government area, uh, close to um, Abia. Is it Abia too? Abia too. You have some villages in Akwaibo that were cut out of in the local government and placed in uh, in Aljuz or Carlos, in uh, Bende or something, in the next uh, local government. So those uh, village heads are confused whether to attend traditional institution in India. So that kind of boundary situation created from state creation, they exist in various parts of the country. Those things are very difficult unless you revisit the boundaries, the boundaries, uh, the state creation uh, act itself. You understand? So it's not something that one state governor can do. But as an attorney general, what would be your advice? But you have more problems if we were to take you. We can't finish you in one day. Because uh, to be very honest, we, we would like continuous interaction with you, even after the, the appointment, assuming you become the attorney general of the federation, because the issues are legion. Just proceed answer to just those two issues where judges of uh, coordinate uh, jurisdictions give uh, divergence uh, put their judgment on the same matter. What would you advise? And then, of course, perennial crisis of boundary disputes caused as a result of state creation and not the fault of the states themselves. What would you do in those two regards? Bearing in mind that some of these states were created in 1967, and they have been existing, and we have had attorney generals. So don't say that state governors should have. It means that they have failed, and this is your turn. What will you do differently? Thank you, sir. I'll crave your indulgence to start from the second one, the second question on the issue of a boundary dispute. I will say that this is not a legal matter. Rather, it is a political matter. I know that a number of factors influence the creation of states, local government, and all that. The chief among them, chiefs among them are one, the willingness of this community to live together, then social cultural uh, uh, um, togetherness. So, if a wrong has been committed, I think it can it, it can be corrected by legislation. Yes. You can amend the constitution if it is the constitution. After all, you have amended about four or five times. This one can, we can collate where those things are. Ask those people, where do you want to be? Where they are going? Will you accept them? Are you ready to accept them? I don't think there is, as far as I'm concerned with respect, it's not a legal matter. Or if it is a, if it, if law is involved, I'll say it's a political legal matter. You make up your mind as to what you do and fashion the constitution along that line. One. Number two, in respect of conflicting uh, judgment or decisions, it is unfortunate. We cannot uh, close our eyes or deny that these exist. But I know that the, as far as the courts are concerned, they have been making efforts to you know, nip this in the bud. For instance, if you approach the Federal High Court today or High Court of Federal Capital Territory, you have to sign a document saying, I have not, you know, filed any other actions, even similar to this, anywhere. If you, otherwise, your case will be uh, struck out, will be dismissed. But this forum shopping, I know is still there. Three people are involved. One, the judge. Two, the lawyer and the litigant. But you discover that most of the cases are political cases. They are political cases. Very few are non-political cases. On the part of the lawyers involved, I know that the long arm of the law, through 
the Legal Practitioners Disciplinary Committee, uh, the body of ventures will catch up with them if appropriate reports are made or they are brought to the attention of these authorities. For the litigants, well, there's very little we can do, but they can also be sanctioned. I will advise that one, we make full disclosure when we are approaching the uh, lawyer to file a case. Because the lawyer is not a wizard, he's not a witch. He won't know whether any judgment, any uh, action has been commenced uh, uh, elsewhere. But by and large, I think the, we need proper reporting, reporting system of court judgment. Especially where you have Federal High Court, we can, uh, I think that can be uh, uh, sorted out, bringing it to the attention of the judge where it is known. It is not only here. For instance, there was a matter, well, let me avoid because it's one of the matters that are sub -judice. We know that it happens, it's occurring. How do we do it? Everybody has to call in more herself to order. For the lawyers, I have mentioned that um, the power of discipline of uh, the legal practitioners uh, disciplinary committee will catch up. The judge can also make recommendation towards the discipline of the judge. They are also uh, of, the, of the lawyer. Then for the judge, the NJC um, will issue its power of discipline. But what we discover is that when this type of case uh, comes up, the man who reported will now come when it is time to hear the matter and say that he's withdrawing his action. And if a man says he's withdrawing his complaint, there is very little remain uh, uh, for anybody to do in the circumstances. So these are my uh, 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 takes on the issue, sir. But for the Attorney General, his uh, interaction with the National Assembly, with the, uh, uh, um, uh, the judiciary, is continuous. He has to answer as often as is needed. And on a humorous note, at no charge. Well, you are used to giving advice without uh, charges. <laughs> Let me thank uh, uh, the nominee, uh, uh, the Lennon Silk, Latif Vagbemi, uh, SAN, for uh, the elucidating answers to most of the questions, and then to also let you know that so many hands are still up waiting for you, but we can't keep you beyond this period now. So our intention will be that we will collect some of the uh, the concerns of the distinguished uh, senators, and then uh, the Senate leader will definitely present them to you, so that if God gives you the office of the Attorney General of the Federation, then you will also use those questions as working uh, uh, documents. Thank you for coming. You may now take leave of the Senate.